Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias Antioch and Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Thursday, March 23rd, 2023, and here are the readings for today. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 10, verse 32 through chapter 11, verse 9. These are the families of the sons of Noah, according to their genealogies in their nations. And from these nations spread abroad on the earth after the flood. Now the whole earth had one language and few words. And as men migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. And then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they will have all one language. And this is the only the beginning of what they will do, and nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down, and there confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all of the earth. And from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. A reading from the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 19, through chapter 14, verse 6. A desire fulfilled is sweet to the soul, but to turn away from evil is an abomination to fools. He who walks with wise men becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Misfortune pursues sinners, but prosperity rewards the righteous. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous. The fallow ground of the poor yields much food, but it is swept away through injustice. He who spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him is diligent to discipline him. The righteous has enough to satisfy his appetite, but the belly of the wicked suffers want. Wisdom builds her house, but folly with her own hands tears it down. He who walks in uprightness fears the Lord, but he who is devious in his ways despises him. The talk of a fool is a rod for his back, but the lips of the wise will preserve them. Where there are no oxen, there is no grain, but abundant crops come by the strength of the ox. A faithful witness does not lie but a false witness breathes out lies. A scoffer seeks wisdom in vain, but knowledge is easy for a man of understanding. A reading from the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 28 verses 14 through 22. Thus says the Lord, you scoffers who rule this people in Jerusalem, because you have said, we have made a covenant with death and with Sheol we have an agreement. When the overwhelming scourge passes through, it will not come to us. For we have made lies our refuge, and in falsehood we have taken shelter. Therefore thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am laying in Zion for a foundation a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone of a sure foundation. He who believes will not be in haste. And I will make justice the line, and righteousness the plummet. And hail will sweep away the refuge of lies, and waters will overwhelm the shelter. Then your covenant with death will be annulled, and your agreement with Sheol will not stand. When the overwhelming scourge passes through, you will be beaten down by it. As often as it passes through, it will take you. From morning by morning it will pass through, by day and by night and it will be sheer terror to understand the message. For the bed is too short to stretch oneself on it, and the covering too narrow to wrap oneself in it. For the Lord will rise up as on Mount Perizim, and he will be wroth as in the valley of Gibeon, to do his deed, 
Strange is his deed, and to work his work, alien is his work. Now therefore do not scoff, lest your bonds be made strong, for I have heard a decree of destruction from the Lord God of hosts upon the whole land. So today in the reading from Genesis, we have the end of what I would call the theological history of humanity. So within the first 11 chapters of Genesis, we have stories that account for the creation of humanity, the explanation of how humanity fell, an epic that talks about a flood and the elimination of almost all of humanity with the exception of one family, Noah's family. And then finally, we have today's reading. And in today's reading, what we have is an explanation for why we speak different languages and maybe to some greater or lesser degree, why we don't get along. The story of Babel tells of how everyone had a common language and so they were able to work together to build a great city. And in building that great city, they decided that they would build a tower that would enable them to go up into the heavens. If that happens, of course, that means they could just drop in and say hello to God any time that they wanted. They could do it in a way where it would be not exactly in accord with God's expectations or his plan. They could just go in whenever they wanted without any kind of prior announcement. Now, obviously, that is not how we understand God, nor is it how we understand the heavens anymore. But the story is that if they worked together in this way, they wouldn't really need God. God would be someone they could just pop in and see at some point, but they would have the skills and the abilities and everything else that they would need so that they wouldn't need God. And so as the story goes, God is aware of this and he confuses their tongues so that they all speak different languages and then he disperses them throughout all of the world so that people in South America don't speak the same language that people in North America do. Now granted, back in that day, I'm not even sure anyone was aware that South or North America existed, but even still, you go into the land where um, these stories would be told, and even there you have people speaking different languages, some from the Persian realm, some from the Egyptian realm, some from north of Israel, and then of course Israel itself. I mean, all of them had a different type of language at that time, and that persists even to today. But an interesting side to all of this is that message that if they build the tower, they would be their own, in a sense, their own God. Now, it's not exactly what's said there, but it does give the indication that it's not going to work out well, the relationship between God and humanity, if the tower is built. And so God confuses their languages. So here we are in this day and age, and let's think about this a little bit. We live in a time where doctors are our new priests. They are the ones who give medicines for healing, perform procedures, again, for healing or correction of maladies. They are the ones that people listen to when they give advice and direction. And you have to follow their prescriptions or their orders to the letter to make sure that it goes well with you. And not only that, but we have our abilities to take care of ourselves, to get food whenever we want by going to a grocery store. We can hop in a car and go to whatever land area that we wish to within the United States. If we want to go to Miami, we can just get in a car and go to Miami. If we want to go to Colorado Springs, we could get in a car and drive to Colorado Springs. If we wanted to go to Edmonton, Alberta, we could do the same thing. Or we could ride a train, or we could ride a bus, or we could fly. And all of these things are at our disposal. And speaking of flying, if we wished, we could fly to Beirut, Lebanon. We could fly to Paris, France. We could fly to any city throughout the world, Sydney. We could thry, fly to just about everywhere. And all of these things show the marvel of human technology, the capacity for human beings to do these miraculous things. Do we need God? Now, of course, my immediate answer is yes, we need God. But do we? How do we depend on God for anything? 
Usually it's when things are beyond our control, and then we finally resort to God. And so God has become, in a sense, the God of the gaps. Now, just to state things a little plainly, in Christianity we teach that Pentecost, in a sense, has reversed what happened in the confusing of the languages associated with the Tower of Babel. But there are other things at work too. As we grow and the continents get closer together through our ability to fly and have transportation, we begin once again to speak common languages. English is a well-spoken language throughout the world. So is Arabic, so is French, so is uh, a certain form of Chinese or Japanese. These languages become the common tongue of people beyond the borders where they, those languages originated and people begin to speak them. So how do we deal with this? How do we come to terms with who we are compared to what they were back then and where we really need to be? Well, the first thing is humility, understanding that we are not totally in control of everything. And even the things that we have are good gifts from God. And so therefore, we should give God the appropriate response and gratitude that is due him because of everything good that he has done for us. It takes a little bit of work, especially for people who do not have deep faith. But it is something that we all must be mindful of. The humility that even with all our great technological advances and our ability to overcome things, we still are at the mercy of nature. We're still at the mercy of the change of the seasons. We're still at the mercy of a good year for growing crops. All these things we have to take into account as we live our lives and we try to discern how we are to live as God's people. So in this light, we remain children of Babel, and we should be indeed more humble about how we approach things in the world. We do not want to be seen as people who live as if there is no God, but rather we should live in accordance with what he expects of us so that he may be pleased in what we do and may find us justified in his heavenly kingdom. Well, I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already done so. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll be happy to answer them when I can. In the meantime, I pray that God will bless you and those of you love today and always. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Thank you very much for joining me today. You have a great day. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.